Toads have been characterized as a symbol of bad luck throughout past and present society. Many associate these grotesque amphibians with witchcraft and all things evil. In the poem Toads by Philip Larkin, toads are used as an extended metaphor for work and bad luck. Toads are also known by their dry, bumpy, and leathery skin. The title of the poem represents the dryness or how boring work is, possibly even how the effects of a routine job can get as ugly as a toad. In fact, Philip Larkin lived a very monotonous life. Born in Coventry, England on August 9, 1922, Larkin attended St. John's College in Oxford and graduated with first class honors in English. He then went on to study to be a professional librarian. A connection can be made between Larkin's long hours working as a librarian and his continual dissatisfaction with the working life. Through this poem's extended metaphor of work and toads, paired with a variety of slant rhymes, use of alliteration, and similes, Larkin is able to establish a bitter connection towards the toads. First, let's take a look at the poem itself. Toads by Philip Larkin why should I let the toad work, squat on my life? Can't I use my wit as a pitchfork and drive the brute off? Six days of the week it soils with its sickening poison, just for paying a few bills, that's out of proportion. Lots of folk live on their wits. Lecturers, lispers, lozels, lob men, louts, they don't end as paupers. Lots of folk live up lanes with fires in a bucket. Eat windfalls and tin sardines. They seem to like it. Their nippers have got bare feet. Their unspeakable wives are skinny as whippets, and yet no one actually starves. Ah, were I courageous enough to shout, Stuff your pension, but I know all too well that's the stuff dreams are made on. For something sufficiently toad-like squats in me too. Its hunkers are heavy as hard luck and cold as snow and will never allow me to blarney my way of getting the fame and the girl and the money, all at one sitting. I don't say one bud is the other, one's spiritual truth, but I do say it's hard to lose either when you have both. Larkin begins his poem by questioning why he must put in constant work and continues to repeat this thought. He focuses only on the toad within himself. Larkin utilizes a slant rhyme. Why should I let the toad work? Can't I use my wit as a pitchfork? Rhyming the word work to the word pitchfork. Work and pitchfork are both alike in that they rhyme. However, they are contrasting as our speaker wants to put a pitchfork through all the work he does. He feels dissatisfaction towards anything related to work. Interestingly enough, in the 1950s, when Toes was published, there was a large trend towards white-collar jobs, which would usually entail a very mundane role. Larkin emphasizes that he wants to put a pitchfork through and thus eliminate his dull 1950s job that he, among many others, worked to satisfy the typical middle-class American stereotype. Throughout these first few stanzas, the speaker adopts a discontented tone, showing how he is angry that he cannot get rid of his drive as a workaholic. Notice, we also only get one perfect rhyme in the entire poem, leaving readers slightly dissatisfied and wanting more complete rhymes. Through this feeling created within the readers, Larkin is able to mimic his own sentiment of unfairness. He puts in so much work while people who do not are, are able to live a better life than him. Moving further in the poem, the focus shifts from the toad's effects on the speaker to other people who do not have the driving force of a toad within them. In the third stanza, Larkin states, lots of folk live on their wits. Lecturers, lisperers, lossels, loblolly men, louts. They don't end as paupers. By starting nearly each word in the stanza with the same letter L, Larkin is able to show that each of these people may play different roles in society, but they're all similar in that they escape their way around any form of mental or physical effort. 
and still manage to achieve fulfillment in life. Additionally, the pronunciation of the letter L is a very elongated consonant sound, which establishes a calming mood within the reader. This signifies that Larkin believes that such people live a very calm and stress-free life. As we transition to our last shift in the poem, Larkin begins to come to terms with the fact that he will never be separated from the toad within him. He says, His hunkers are heavy as hard luck. Larkin is discussing how this toad within him is squatting and it is weighing him down, and compares this to the weightiness of hard luck or bad luck. This comparison brings to light that Larkin has bad luck due to this toad, and due to that, he will never reach an abundance of wealth and satisfaction. In the last lines, Philip Larkin ends with a strong sense of closure, as he understands his fantasy world containing a life of minimal work and maximal contentment will never occur. He must settle for his toad-like self. Publishing one poem, however, was not enough for Philip Larkin to portray the disgust he felt for the people that have dodged the work that he so inherently did. He went on to create the poem, Toads Revisited, which starts with the lines, walking around in the park should feel better than work. The lake, the sunshine, the grass to lie on. Blurred playground noises, beyond black stocking nurses, not a bad place to be. In this new poem, Larkin eventually acknowledges once again that a non-working life does not suit him and never will.